Hello and welcome. Thanks for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover, and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get right to it. We're going to be looking at reactivity in Svelte. Reactivity has kind of two meanings in Svelte. Every framework has a way of reacting to things. So in React, they use state changes and diffing on a virtual DOM in order to know when to update a component based off of state changes. In Svelte, there's actually two ways. In Svelte, they, use, they don't use a virtual DOM at all. They use assignments, and then they also have something special called reactive statements. I started digging into the documentation on some of this and looking at the very first example they give for a reactive statement, I got to questioning whether or not this is something that we can just do in React. I put together two apps. One, they're both just to-do apps, one using React and one using Svelte, and started going through what they're doing here with both. And I quickly realized these are not the same thing and this, this really is a unique functionality that Svelte is giving us here. Inside of my to-do apps, I have this Svelte one and I have the React one. Let's go take a look at the code for these. One of the things that they show you is using a reactive statement to generate some secondary value. Well, I got to thinking you can absolutely do that in React. Here I have a, a to-do's array. When you add to that array, as long as there's at least one item, then it's going to create a secondary value called section by splicing off a piece of it. In the Svelte documentation, they would have you do something like this, where you do a dollar sign, colon, and then this is a reactive statement. Now, there's immediately some differences. Well, one is the syntax. that I'll give you that. You've seen that, I'm sure. You don't have to put let in front of the variable name. Uh, Svelte injects that for you. Functionally, though, on the surface, it looks like it does the same thing. So if I go into my app, and I were to, let's fire up the React one. And I'll show you what this looks like. So here's our React one. And I can put in a, a to-do here. And if I hit enter the, to add the to-do, then you'll see that there's two of them. And what's going on behind the scenes is what I was showing you in this app.jsx file. We have a list of to-dos that's created by use state. And then we have this secondary constant variable. So when this function runs, it's going to create this secondary constant that's splicing off a chunk of that to-dos. And then I'm rendering out both lists one after another down here. So pretty straightforward. And you can see it works. So here's the original, and then there is the copy. Okay, but that's pretty much where the, where the similarities end. From here on out, it's a whole different ball of wax. Reactive statements in Svelte, you can do so much more. Let me show you guys the basic Svelte version. And we'll go ahead and fire up that one. And then let's take a look at that code. So here, I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to show you guys this in just a second. Here we have that section. And I'm going to come down here and replace this with section. So here, now I've got this set up the exact same way as the React one. So let's go ahead and save that. And then if I add in a mess with chat and hit enter. Uh, there is one difference here. That is, uh, I'm changing, I'm setting the one inside the section to be uh, done by default. I can change that. There, now it's set up exactly the same. So it's just a copy uh, without the button. So that seems pretty straightforward, right? They're functionally the same thing. However, the reactive statements are very different. This statement is actually not being ran until all of the rest of the script is done. Whereas in the React version, it's running this, 
and then it's running this right afterwards, right? Because that's how the code's ran. Reactive statements are not ran that way. They actually have, they're timed out. So everything else inside of the script tag runs, and then only if, so here's the second part that makes these very different and makes this very unique functionality, only if what these things depend on which is any any direct values in here only if any of those things change will it rerun the reactive statement you you kind of have this built-in component will mount hook almost like that sort of thing but it's also memoized for you like a use effect hook with a dependency array at the end this is really cool stuff this is way different than uh, being able to do that in react first of all here you would have to use a use effect hook you would have to provide dependencies you'd be causing multiple re-renders in your app uh, doing that particularly with react 18 with everything being uh, ran twice now if you're not familiar with that check that out uh, i'll leave the link in the description for the react 18 documents on why they decided to do that it's not a bug they actually did it intentionally in svelte a reactive statement it's going to run all of the code inside of your script tags and then it's going to look at the react statement and say hey did any of the dependencies inside of this reactive statement change and if they did then it will rerun it at that point so it's timed for you and it's also memoized pretty cool stuff and it doesn't stop there here is another way that these reactive statements really vary I'm going to uh, uncomment this and then down here I'm going to change this from section to reactive reactivate sorry and let's take a look at what I'm doing here so the next thing that varies greatly is that these reactive statements you can put multiple pieces of functionality so what I'm doing here is we have the original reactive statement that is going to be watching the list of to do's and if it has length to it it's just going to lop off the first item and set the done value to true automatically set it to true and then assign it to the reactive variable section which again svelte injects the let there for you so in svelte you can assign these blocks and do multiple things inside of the reactive block and then here i'm doing some conditional stuff so if the section is greater than zero, then it's going to copy that section and put it into this other variable. And then we're rendering that out instead of the section variable. And let's go take a look at how this works. So let's add mess with chat and hit add. And you can see, holy cow. So inside of our code, it really is going through and doing all this. So it runs all of the script I hit the add, it looks at this reactive statement and it says, hey, the to-dos array has changed, so we need to run this again. It runs it again and copies out the first item, setting the value of done to now true. And then it looks at this one and says, hey, the section has changed, so we need to run this block again. And inside of here, we're looking to see if the section length is greater than zero. And if it is, we're just copying that over onto reactivate and then rendering that out. And there's our result. So this is pretty cool stuff. And you can get way more in depth than this. This also is only one of the, uh, one of a few ways of controlling state and doing, there's some other really cool functionality uh, that we can do with Svelte. I'm going to keep this video short and just focus on the reactivity stuff. Svelte so far has been super cool. I, I hope you guys have found this video on Svelte reactivity helpful. If you did, please give a like and thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not. And as always, have a great day. Mm -hmm.